We're going to talk about the life and times of Gareth Southgate. We're going to start with Ian because his tie in tribute to the England head coach this evening. Yeah, I want to, I want to be like Gareth. <laughs> Suits him better though. It looks better on him though. No? Uh, it doesn't matter. I just want to be like Gareth. I want Gareth. to be like him. Yeah. You knew a very young Gareth Southgate at Crystal Palace when he was, a, I think we could say, a bit of a gawky teenager, wasn't he? Yes. Um, yeah, there he is. Look, I think he might have been about 16 or something. What's that? The 80s, I think. That's in the 80s. Yeah. What, 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 what did these senior players think about this, this you know what? teenager? It, it's really strange because I remember we had a, a quite a prominent midfielder who's quite extrovert and he's talking and that. And he used to say that Gareth's a bit nerdy and that. I remember Steve Coppel would just tell him about, tell Gareth, if he speaks to you like that, just show him your O levels or something. Because <laughs> he's so clever. Brilliant. Well, we can see what's happened since. You intersect a lot with Gareth as a player, as a manager, and a colleague here at ITV. We've got a shot of you with him as a manager. How did you find managing against him? Oh, brilliant. Really top man. Even, I think we actually beat him with Sunderland at Middlesbrough. And, um, no, he was great after the games. Again, classy guy. T top man. Considering we had a difficult start. You, you had a difficult start because you had you had a bit of a contretemps on the pitch with him. Because we're, we're showing this because <laughs> he had a spiky side as well. You got sent off, I have to say that, but he had a spiky side. Yeah, but you should go back a few shots before that. Garrett tried to cut me in half, so that was just retaliation. Mm. And I think if you look at Garrett's face, I still think he's probably exaggerating it. <laughs> but, <laughs> your foot's yeah. in his hip. Well, as you, I used to always tell the defenders, always stay on your feet, so you should be <laughs> criticised for that. <laughs> and what about as a colleague when you work together? You work together on the Euros in, in Poland and Ukraine with ITV. Just a quality guy. Obviously, you can't begrudge Garrett and his success, the way he's done it. Again, he's worked with the 21s. He's been involved in nearly 100 international matches at both levels. I've got loads of times for Garrett, obviously. As I said, as a player, we the battles, manager, then working with him, having some good chats, some late nights. Brilliant guy. And Euro 96, you and he played together in that memorable summer. We hope there's another memorable summer. We hope we're in the middle of it. We've, we've got the national anthems being sung. And if you remember this time, you'll guess who sings loudly. Gary Southgate, loudly. Stuart Pearce, very loudly. Gary Neville doesn't know the words to the national anthem. Paris. I do something, it's one of my big regrets that, looking back now, but just it's probably epitomised the difference between me and Gareth when it comes to club and country. I adored my club and loved playing for England. He loved his club but adored England. He was so passionate about his country. I think this suits him. You know, I don't buy into this theory that if Gareth was even to win this tournament that he would be a success going back into club management. I think this really suits him. He loves the job. I think the way in which is the detail of international management he loves. I saw it obviously when I was a coach with Roy that he was with the under-21s and he'd attend some of our meetings. Him and Steve Holland were the team there. And they deserve that all the the credit that they get, the good fortune that they get. Gary, I and millions of people watching have watched a lot of nightmares from England over the last 30 years. We all know what they are. How big a job is it, how big an achievement that he has reconnected the English nation, this would be sold out if it could be, and the England team, because it's been a very fractious relationship at times. Honestly, I, I've never known an England team that unified everybody in the country as much as this lot there. They're faultless, flawless in the way in which they go about things. There's been a lot of division in the last couple of years. We've come out of a pandemic. We've had England teams in the past that have been, to be fair, scandal galore going into tournaments. The manager does everything right, and this group of players respond to that. If you think about how he dealt with Foden and Greenwood a year ago, he disciplined them, but now he's integrated them back into the squad. Obviously, Greenwood's not made it. There's a level of discipline, but there's a level of respect, and the country respects the players, and the players respect the country. We should be really proud of them and our manager.